This Bigfoot sighting comes out of Burlington County, New Jersey, from December the 27th of 2005. The witness said that him and his girlfriend was driving on one of the dirt trails off of Route 72, saying that they just hit the trail when he needed to stop for something. After a few minutes, he says that he looked up at his girlfriend. He noticed that she was looking out up the road. She was pale like she had just seen a ghost or something. He said that he asked her, what's wrong? She replied that she had just seen something tall and hairy cross the road up in front of them. So he told her that it might have been a large deer or something. But she was a little freaked out. So he got out of the car and started looking around for whatever she saw. As he was walking around, he noticed some brush moving and could hear some rustling. As he turned to move towards the moving brush, he noticed a face of an animal. It was about six foot high, standing there looking at him through a big pile of brush. While this creature was standing there watching him, he noticed that the creature's face was black in color, while the hair was a dark sandy to a light brown in color saying that this creature's face looked more ape-like than human, while its hair seemed to be longer on the top of this creature's head. The witness says that he was about 25 feet away from him at the time of the sighting. Now he said that he couldn't believe what he was seeing, that he closed his eyes and shook his head. When he reopened his eyes, this creature stood straight up, then took off running deeper into the woods on two legs, he said. That this animal was definitely bipedal as it ran into the pines. He thinks that the creature stood six and a half to seven foot tall, saying that it wasn't huge, but it was very muscular. The witness said that he is a weightlifter, but that this creature was much bigger than him. Now for what his girlfriend saw, she says that it all happened really fast, that it was in a dead run as it came across the road. She said that she didn't see any facial details, that she saw this big hairy creature as it ran across the road, that it was on two legs for sure. That's one thing she noticed, while it had light brown hair covering its body with it being longer around the shoulders and head area, with it being very fast with long strides, then it was gone back into the pine forest. Now the witness says that his girlfriend had seen something about six months before this sighting, that they had gone camping near Tuckerton, that on the way they took a detour to Apple Pie Hill, that there is a lookout there they wanted to climb, so as they made their way to the top of the tower, they were looking around when she looked back down in front of the tower. Then she shouted out, What was that? Saying that she saw something walking into the woods. Once the witness got back to the car, he said that him and his girlfriend talked about what they had both seen while watching for this creature in case it came back. After a little while had passed, they decided to leave never seeing that animal again that day. Well, that was a cool little sighting. I hope you liked this one. This sighting report comes out of Harrison County, Ohio, from September the 4th of 2010. The witness said that him and his cousin had leased some hunting land in Harrison County. The witness said that he thought it was around September the 4th when this event happened. It was around 9 a.m. and him and his cousin was out clearing their ATV trails. He says that the wildlife was just booming and having fun all around them, with the birds chirping while the squirrels jumped from tree to tree. All the wildlife was moving around just as to be expected. When the witness said suddenly, Everything just stopped, went completely quiet, 
The witness said that this was very strange to them, so much that they both stopped what they were doing. They both stood straight up and motionless, as the both of them looked around, scanning the trees, when the witness noted something behind a tree. It was about 50 yards away from them. It was big, the witness stated that the preacher was standing upright while standing behind a tree. It was covered with hair all over its body. Saying that it was approximately eight foot tall, saying that at first they could only see about half of this creature's face, as well as this creature's large shoulders and left arm. It seemed to be watching them from behind the tree. Both the witnesses was armed with hand guides which found their way into their hands very quickly. While this stare-down lasted for about 30 to 45 seconds, when the witness said he turned to his cousin and asked him, in a very low voice, Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Saying that his cousin replied, Yes, in a shaky voice. With the witness asking next time, What is it? With his cousin replying, you know what it is, saying that they both knew what they were looking at. It was a Bigfoot. Within just a few more seconds of watching this thing, or you could say just a few more seconds of this creature watching them, that it took off running perpendicular to them, saying that they got glimpses of it as it crashed through the brush moving small saplings and large trees out of its way, stating that this creature ran completely upright the whole way, never going down to all fours as it moved through the woods. The two witnesses watched this creature run for 50 to 60 yards before it disappeared into the swamp. The witness said that at this point, the hair on the back of his neck was standing straight up. Even though they were extremely nervous about what they had just witnessed, they decided to go over to where the creature had run away. Once they could see that the saplings had been broken, with some of the others being pushed completely over. So they both decided to get out of there for the day. So they loaded back up the ATVs and left. Now in the follow-up investigation report by the BFRO, in the follow-up, one of the witnesses is a police officer who has been trained to make quick observations of an event as it unfolds. That he had about 45 seconds to observe this creature as it was watching them, stating that it was eight feet tall, while being at least 350 pounds, that it also had dark brown hair that looked to be around four inches long, with the hair around its face being shorter, about two inches in length. While well, he said the creature's head was big, at least 16 inches, maybe 18 inches tall, and 12 to 14 inches wide, while well, coming to a point at the top of its head, with it also having a very pronounced eyebrow, that it had dark eyes with a flat nose, but that he didn't notice any teeth. Now, as far as this creature's body, the witness said that the shoulders were wide, while its hips narrower and having a large rump. It also had a big gut to the witness. One thing that really stuck out and was very noticeable was the creature's muscles, that he could see the muscles in this creature's arms, legs, and torso throughout its back as well, as it was running towards the swamp. Now where this sighting took place is a 327 acre patch of woods, which is bordered by a swamp. The witness says that they hunted this land for a long time, but that he never seen the creature again on it. I hope you enjoyed this sighting report. This Bigfoot sighting comes out of Miller County, Arkansas from the winter of 2000. 
around late June or early February, the witness says, that he was coon hunting in Miller County, Arkansas, that he wasn't for sure just how far from Mercer Bayou he was. He says he was in an area called Thornton Wells by the old timers. They were hunting in the flooded timbers when their dog split tree. So the witness started across the swamp to where his dogs had treed, while the guys that was with him headed for their dogs. When the witness says he got to his dogs, with the coon being in the tree, he rounded his dogs up and put them on their leashes. With everything being good on his end, he decided to head over to where the other guys were. He could still hear their dogs treeing. They were on the other side of the swamp, it sounded. Now as the witness started heading in their direction, suddenly he could hear someone walking behind him. It sounded like a person to him. Saying while him and his dogs were in the flooded timbers, that the water was 8 to 15 inches deep, with it being blackish in color. Just old looking swamp water, he says. That he could tell by its gait, just the way it moved through the water. So the witness called out to them, thinking it might be one of his hunting companions. With him being in dismay, there was no answer back. Instead, the witness says, he only heard what sounded like a deep low growl to him. Then all of a sudden he smelt the most awful putrid smell. The witness described the smell as if you had killed a wild hog and after dragging it to your gave out, then you wiped the sweat off your face using the hand you'd just been dragging the hog with. The smell of your hand that knocks you over. Wow, that didn't even sound good. But I'm sure most hunters out there kind of knows what he's talking about. At least the hog hunters anyway. He also said at this time he heard a whining kind of whistling sound. When his dogs on the leash started to whimper. Now the witness says that these weren't just any old dogs. His dogs were UKC lipper breed walkers. That they weighed around 100 pounds each. That they had killed coyotes that had came around them as they had something treed. Yet at this moment, they were cowarding and crouched behind his legs. While whimpering like newborn pups. He says that he couldn't understand what was going on. Saying that he still didn't have any concerns. So he got his dogs and started moving again towards his friends. After just a few minutes back moving, he heard the sound of someone or something walking behind him again. So the witness said that he stopped again and turned around to see what was following him. As he turned, standing right in front of him was this massive creature. The witness says as his light hit this creature's eyes, they shined back at him. They just glowed like a deer's eyes in a spotlight. This creature was at least eight feet tall, maybe nine. At this time, the witness says that every hair on the back of his neck was standing straight up. Saying that he was really scared, that he doesn't remember ever being this scared before in his life. He noticed that this creature had dark hair covering its body from head to toe. This creature made a hissing sound. Then it reached down and scooped up water, throwing it at the witness. As it was making a very deep throaty sound. At this time, his dog started biting at their leashes and lunging at this creature. Saying that his dogs regained their bravery for sure at this point. Where their loyalty and will to protect their owner kicked in overtaking their fear. The witness says he grabbed the leashes and him and the dogs just started running. As the witness was running across the swamp, 
said that he was so scared that he didn't even realize that him and the dogs were running in the wrong direction. When he says he came up to a big cypress, that he took a knee trying to catch his breath, when he heard this creature again behind him. This time it sounded like it was about a hundred yards away. With this creature following him for a while more, then the witness says he could hear this creature moving away from him in the bayou. While this creature was heading away from him slowly, he could hear it making a moaning sound. He stopped and caught his breath once again while finding his bearings. After he realized what direction he needed to head, at this point the witness just wanted to get back to his truck. And as he got back to his truck, his friends were already there, saying that when he saw his friends he was so relieved, but that he never said a word about what he experienced that night. He knows what they would have said and done. Mainly they would have laughed him down. He knows because he would have also. He says that he only ever told one person about what had happened to him. It was an older coon hunter that he knew had seen something out there as well. He said the old timer told him not to ever tell anyone about what he had seen. That they would only make fun of him. The old timer said that he knew this from experience. So the witness says that he never told anyone, not until he made this sighting report on the BFRO website. He says that he had nightmares about this for a long time, while he has never went back to Thornton Wells, saying that he has no plans on ever going back either. He doesn't coon hunt anymore either. Now a few more details came down of the follow-up investigating report. The witness noticed that he saw this creature's hands very well when it reached down to splash the water, stating that it looked like a giant monkey's hand, saying that it did have skin on its hand, that it was gray in color, with hair that ran right up to the hand with the hair being a dark brown or a rusty brown, while the witness also said that this creature's face was a grayish color as well. But the witness says the face was very human-like, that it haunted him in his dreams for many years now. Wow, so I hope you liked this sighting report. Hello and welcome to those endless mysteries. Today we will be taking a look into a Bigfoot sighting. This sighting is from California on August the 21st of 2005. This sighting was witnessed by the whole family. The report was filed by the mother to the BFRO website. The witness stated that on August the 21st of 2005 that her, her husband, and their son went on a day hiking trip. They were hiking up to Lake Roosevelt and its twin, saying that they arrived at the lakes around 11 a.m. that morning, with it being a beautiful day. They decided to fish for a while, so they stayed at the lake until around 2.30, when they decided that they should start heading back. So as they hit the trail heading back home, which the trails were busy this day, with people and horses. Now the witness says that they were following a trail of horses and riders down the trail when they decided to stop and read some signs in the area. One of the signs was about how wagons was used to cross the trail back in the old days. When the witness says that she heard a noise, that it sounded like someone else was coming down the trail. So the witness told her family, let's get going. So as they started walking back down the trail again, the witness says that the trail was dry and very dusty, that her husband kept insisting that we take a rest and let the other hikers and horse riders get further down the trail so they wouldn't be walking through their dust trails. 
This part of the trail was slightly uphill. So once they made it to the top, they decided to take a water break and let the other hikers move on. Now at this time, the witness says, they heard a loud shout, with her son shouting back and getting what sounded like an answer back, but that the echo was really bad, so they couldn't make out what was being said. After a few more minutes, they started back down the trail again. Now the witness said, as they approached the south end of Levitt Meadows, her husband said in a loud voice, what is that? Saying that her and her son turned and looked in the direction of her husband, that what they saw next was strange to them. It looked to be a big black thing. It looked as if it was floating across the meadow. At first the witness thought it might be someone on a bike because it was moving very quickly and smooth. But they couldn't see the bike. They could see its legs and arms. Well, if it was a backpacker, they would have had to be running. And it's not that easy to run with a backpack on. Not that smoothly, anyway. It's truly looked to be floating or something. Another thing that witness pointed out was why would someone be in black pants, shirt, and coat while it was 80 to 85 degrees outside? It really looked strange. They stood there and watched this creature for 10 to 15 seconds before they tried to get a better angle or view of it. So they moved up the trail, still being able to see it moving through the meadow. The witness said that her son yelled at whatever this thing was. At this point, it stopped and turned and looked right at them, just for a second or two. Then it went back moving across the meadow, that it didn't run or even hurry at all. It just moved as it was before her son yelled at it. Now saying that they were at least 500 yards, maybe even up to 800 yards away from this thing that she or her husband didn't think that this thing was a hiker anymore, that just the way it moved, its head looked to be setting on its shoulders, while the shoulders were broad, with a large body, but at the distance they couldn't make too much out, just that it moved unlike any animal that her or her husband had ever seen before. Now, at that distance, I can see why they're not for sure if it was a Bigfoot-type creature or not. They're not even for sure if it was another backpacker or not. With this creature moving so smooth at a fast pace, or a run even, I don't see it being a human. I ran in a backpack, or at least tried to. It's not that easy if it's a full pack. So I'm not for sure about this one. They were sure it wasn't a bear or something on all fours, that it was bipedal. So I hope you like this one. This Bigfoot sighting report comes out of Oregon from October 23rd of 2010, with the nearest town being Hugo. The witness says that it was around 7 or 7.15 when the sighting took place. While still being very dark and overcast, it had just stopped raining not long before he had his sighting, saying that he parked his vehicle on an ATV trail and started walking very quietly into the woods. He did have a flashlight but didn't want to scare off any deer that might be close to him. He wanted to get to a nice clearing he knew about. It was one of his favorite hunting spots. While moving quickly up the path with making very little sound. Now at this time he says he saw a large animal cross the path in front of him. That it was walking upright as it crossed his path. Saying that this creature was only 10 yards away from him when he saw it. Now that's a close sighting. 
with this creature walking and not running. That it covered at least 15 to 20 feet in two strides. He says that it crossed from his left to his right as it moved in front of him. Now saying at this time he froze in his tracks. Then he clicked on his flashlight to see what this thing was. Now what the witness saw next made his hair stand on end, seeing a very large and muscular creature, which had wet and dark fur. This creature was between seven to seven and a half feet tall and weighed at least 500 pounds, the witness said. He says that he had seen a few bears in his time and that what he saw this morning was not a bear. Saying that this creature was about 20 yards away from him at this time, that it was heading quickly down the hillside, moving deeper into the trees. The witness also said that he was fixed on this creature's body and he doesn't think this creature ever turned and looked back at him with the witness being very lucky to have seen the creature. With the ambient light being so low at the time of the sighting, if it hadn't been uphill from him, he might not have seen this thing. The witness said that he only noticed this creature because it blocked out the clouds as it crossed in front of him. Now the witness said that when this creature walked, it didn't move like a human. It didn't bob up and down like a person does. It was smooth and looked to glide. Its legs were bent when it walked as well, with the torso being slightly hunched over. While this creature's arms were very long, they hung down to this creature's side, with them swinging back and forth as a person would when walking. He says he don't really remember what the creature's hands looked like and that he didn't have any idea if it was a male or female, that he only saw this creature from behind as it moved away. He says that it was big, muscular, and had a big rear end while having a head that looked to be sitting on its shoulders. If it did have a neck, he couldn't see it on this creature. He also said that he wants to say its head was slightly pointed, but that he's not positive about that. He said that he did have a camera on him at the time of the sighting, saying that even if he had remembered his camera, that the sighting didn't last long enough for him to have taken one, saying that he never believed in Bigfoot, mainly because with all the digital phones out there, he thought there would be plenty of pictures out there by now. But now after his sighting, he says he can see why there aren't that many pictures. With the surprise of the sighting, with it only lasting around five seconds or a little more, before he even thought about his camera, this creature was already gone. He watched this creature cover 25 yards in about five seconds with it not being in any rush at all. Now here is a drawing of what the witness said he saw. So I would say if this is what the witness saw, then he saw a Bigfoot for sure. A bear does not have a backside that looks like that. This hunter has spent a lot of time in the woods, so I'm sure he knows what all the local wildlife looks like. So I think he saw something that he wasn't even considering seeing that morning. So if you have a comment on this, drop it down below. Hello and welcome to those endless mysteries. Today I'm going to be going over a Bigfoot sighting out of Pierce County, Washington. This sighting occurred on March the 1st of 2014. The witness stated that he was traveling up Copper Creek in his off-roader. Now, Copper Creek is near Ashford, Washington. As he was doing his snow run, testing a new part on his off-roader, he said that it was around 4 p.m. that evening, saying as he came around a corner on his path, 
that he saw a large bipedal creature cross his trail in front of him, with it going up the bank and to his right. Saying that he came to a stop and watched this creature as it moved through three to four foot of snow walking up the hill. Saying that this creature didn't look like it was walking through high snow. It walked as if it was walking on normal hard ground. He described it at one time as being an oversized gorilla. The witness watched this creature until it disappeared back into the forest. The witness described this creature as having rusty brown looking hair, with the hair on this creature's shoulders and upper back looking to be longer. Also, the hair on its arms from its elbows down look longer as well. As the witness watched this creature, he also noticed that it had long strides as it walked. Even though the high snow, its strides seemed huge. The witness said that this creature never looked back at him. It just remained moving forward up the hill, so he never saw this creature's face. But he did say that the creature's head was more pointed than round which has been reported in many other cases I've looked into. The witness also said that this creature was around eight and a half to nine feet tall. So it sounds like he saw a big male. But what I have learned over the years, the females don't get that big. Somewhere around six and a half to seven foot tall, I think is a good size for a female Bigfoot. So let's get back to the sighting report here. The witness says that after this sighting, he kept an eye out for the rest of the trip. Now, the witness said as he got to the top, he stopped and parked. Seeing as he sat there that he heard tree knocks, sounding like they were less than a mile away from him, but that the sounds does carry very well in this area. So knocks could have been coming from further away, he says. So yeah, I think if he did see a creature eight and a half to nine feet tall while it was walking bipedal, then he saw a Bigfoot. So I hope you liked this video. Hello and welcome to those endless mysteries. Today we will be going over a Bigfoot sighting from June the 3rd of 2009. This sighting comes out of California, which ranks second only to Washington for the most sightings in a state. Now the witness says that he's still very emotional about what he saw that day and can remember every moment of his encounter with this creature. That on June the 3rd of 2009, that him and a friend with his 15 month old daughter had went swimming and fishing. After being there for about 20 minutes, the witness wandered off looking for some lizards. While the terrain in the area is heavily forested with old redwoods and oaks, while having a heavy fern growth as well, saying at this point he started to hear a loud thumping sound, that when he looked in the direction of the thumping, he says that he saw a large creature. This creature was around 100 feet up the hill from him. The witness says that as the encounter started, that the creature was slightly crouched down. While the witness stood there watching this creature, the creature would move very slowly, looking as if it was trying to conceal itself behind a bush and a large upright boulder. The witness and this creature seemed to be watching each other for at least a minute. So the witness was able to get a very good look at this creature. Noticing a lot of this creature's features, the witness described the creature as having reddish brown hair, with it being long and shaggy, while it was matted in spots, particularly up on its head and around its upper shoulders, with the witness describing this creature as having bad bed head. <laughs> okay, I can get that one. Kind of reminds me of my hair in the mornings. So yeah, I can relate to this Bigfoot already. We both have bad bed heads. While the hair along its arms seemed to be groomed and clean, the witness also noticed that this creature's hair on the top of its head 
was just a shade darker than the rest of its body. He says that this creature's eyes were very large, that its eyes looked to be close to three times bigger than that of a human, saying that the eyes were uh, amber brown while having very little white in the corners of its eyes. Now, as far as this creature's nose goes, the witness said that it was flat with large nostrils. At one time, he compared it to having a pig and monkey nose combined. Well, that would be a strange nose now. Pig and monkey combined? That sounds strange, but I think the witness was just trying to describe it in a way that people could understand that this creature had huge nostrils and they were wide apart on its face. The witness says that he never seen the teeth or tongue of this creature, but that the lips on this creature was full and thick. The witness said that this creature did have ears, that they stuck out a bit, but not too much. They were close to the head while not having any hair on them, saying that they were the color of birds which I take as being a darker brown in color, or this creature could have actually had mud on its ears to help protect its ears from bugs and mosquitoes. So yeah, I could see that happening as well. Now with this creature having no hair on its nose and jawline, the witness said that the hair on this creature's face was patchy at best. Well, he did say he noticed a light gray hair around its eyes. He also noticed that this creature's head looked to sit right on top of its shoulders. That if it did have a neck, then he didn't notice it, he said. He did say that the creature had huge shoulders, saying that it looked like a linebacker in full pads. As he also said that he noticed this creature's chest, that this creature was definitely a male, saying that it didn't have any breasts that it only had light hair covering its chest, while he saw what looked like dirty reddish peach skin underneath the creature's hair. Another thing the witness said that he noticed was that this creature only blinked twice that he can remember seeing during the whole encounter. While the witness also states that the animal had a benign look on its face at first, but that towards the end of the encounter, that it started looking a little more aggressive, with the creature getting a slight snarl on its face, that he believed the creature was letting him know that it didn't want him here anymore. But the creature never let out any kind of noise. So I guess that the creature's face showed enough emotion to let the witness know he wasn't wanted in the area anymore. Even though the witness said it wasn't quite human looking, but he could still see the emotion on this creature's face. So to me, it sounds like it had enough human emotions to show through. So with being able to show human emotions, could that mean that it's also a very intelligent animal? From what I have came to believe over the years is yes, that these creatures are very smart and knows when humans are in the area that they truly try not to be seen. But their curiosity about us gets the best of them sometimes. Let them get a little too close. Then we have another witness with a sighting story to be told. While other sightings happens by accident. Someone comes around a curve or something, then that's another sighting report. I do believe that if these creatures do really exist, that they are very smart animals. The witness says that as the creature started looking a little upset that he was there, that he left the area. Then he rounded up the others and left for home, saying that he didn't know why, that he just wanted to get out of the area. The witness also said that he has had a lot of strange experiences over the years, like rock throwing, and a large splash that hit the water, sometimes getting pine cones thrown into their campsites. So what do you think about this sighting? I hope you all like this one. Hello and welcome to Those Endless Mysteries.
Today we will be looking into a Bigfoot sighting. Now this sighting comes out of Montgomery County, Texas from June the 22nd of 2014. The witness states that at approximately 6.10 in the morning of June the 22nd of 2014, that he witnessed what could only be described as a large male Sasquatch. That he was on his way to work at his work yard that's in New Caney, Texas saying that it was a very cloudy day, while having a heavy dew rising as well. He was driving the speed limit of 35 while looking for local wildlife, just as he does every morning. The witness says that the area where the sighting occurred is thickly wooded, but that it is also dotted with many homes, with it being very close to the river that runs through this area. The witness saw a group of cows that had a couple of smaller calves within them. Then the witness said he noticed a very tall shadowy figure approaching them, with him saying that this creature stood at least eight to nine foot tall, with very wide shoulders that he estimated to be at least 48 to 50 inches across from shoulder to shoulder. The witness says that he hit his brakes and started slowing down. With the creature seeing his brake lights, that it turned and looked right at him. Now the witness says that he is a bow hunter and has gotten really good at judging distance. So he estimated that this creature was around 45 to 50 yards away from him. Besides noticing the height and width of this creature, the witness says he noticed that this creature's head was sloped. In his own words, it had a long, sloping forehead, while he also noticed a very defined brow ridge. The witness says that it was covered with hair, but that he couldn't tell what color it was, which I can see. That time of the morning is a very hard time to judge colors. Now the witness says that this creature turned towards him, that he noticed that this creature's arms hung down to its side, that they were very long arms, almost touching its knees. The witness says that he thinks that the creature was after a calf, even though the wildlife is abundant in this area. So I can see that happening as well. Why chase something through the woods when there's a meal right there fenced in? Easy prey. The witness said that he tried to take his phone out and take a picture. But by the time he got his phone out of his pocket, that the creature had turned and headed back into the woods. Now one other thing that the witness noticed about this creature is that it had huge hands saying that it could palm a watermelon with hands like that. Well, he didn't notice a neck on this creature either, but he did notice something that seemed a little weird, saying that this creature looked to have a distinct beard, that it started along its cheeks and hung down to its chest area. A beard sounds a little strange, but I have heard that description before, but only a couple of times. It's not what most people report seeing. Maybe sometimes they grow heavier patches of hair around their chins and neck areas. He did say that the beard was the same color as the rest of its hair, which sounds to me as being a dark brown or black color. That would explain why it was hard for him to tell what color this creature was. The witness also said that the creature's hair looked thinner in its chest area, or maybe it was a lighter color. Now, the witness did say that once he hit his brakes and started slowing, that this creature turned and looked at him, that this thing watched him until he came to a complete stop. Then it turned and walked back into the woods that it didn't make any vocalization or anything like that towards him. So I don't think that he heard the witness coming down the road. 
that the creature was going after one of the calves in the field. Then it seemed the red lights from the witness's brakes. Maybe it didn't know what the red lights were, so it turned to watch the lights. When the witness came to a stop, that's when he saw the witness and decided to leave at that moment. Now, I hope you enjoyed and liked this one. So till next time, stay safe and have a great day. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can keep up with all of our latest videos. And thanks for watching Those Endless Mysteries.